Today we are here with uh, artist Daniel Solly from uh, Collective Works and we are going to talk about his art and he will tell us more about him and all his paintings. Hello Daniel, how are you today? I am well, thank you. So one question. I see on your for the paintings that we see here, uh, you have lots of uh, influence from the Orient. Is that true? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, and that influence was really brought to my own attention, you know, uh, back in 2002. I had a show in, uh, in Japan on the island of uh, Kyushu, the city of Kitakyushu. And when I spoke to the uh, visitors to the, to the show, 80% uh, of the people I talked to had always said one of two things. And they had said either that you must have been Japanese in a past life or you, have, you must have a Japanese heart. And then from there they'd want to know, like, how does that happen? Because here you are, you're this Westerner, you know, coming to Japan with your work, and, and they really are responding to the work because of that similarity they see to their particular um, idea, you know, the aesthetic, you know, culturally in their art. And in that story, when I talk to them, I have to take them back to my childhood. And I was always someone that could always draw. It was always an ability that was always there. Because I always laugh and tell people my first commissions were the uh, requests by fellow students to, oh, could you draw Santa Claus? Could you draw this rabbit? Could you draw this for me? And uh, as time progressed from probably when we got access to the library, that would have been probably grade three, and uh, I discovered these books of Japan and China, and I'd go through them, and I was really drawn and attracted to the, uh, the, the sumi paintings, the ink paintings, and the brushwork from the calligraphy to the mountains and the waterfalls and the bamboo. And, as a child, that just appealed to me so much. It was almost magical to see how they had achieved it. And their use of you know, negative space in their paintings, you know, that, that just sort of stayed with me at that early age. And uh, as I grew older, you know, I would read more. And I'd, every now and again, I'd discover something Japanese, and I'd look at it. And, uh, and in that process of developing that kind of an Asian connection, it also has to connect back to the, the Inuit people and their art. Because very similarly, they, they had a real natural sense of uh, the aesthetic and, and space and how to place you know, their image with their stone uh, prints and they have all this negative space around it. Just, I just love that balance. And so between them and uh, some of the histories where they talk about the uh, Inuit, you know, they think the land bridge from Siberia through, they might have quite easily have been, you know, early roots might have been Asian, and then they did the migration over. So that was always with me. And then as I got older, uh, probably about 25, I really, for the first time again as an adult, a young adult, discovered art again. Because I sort of went by the wayside, I still doodled and did my little things. But the, the first workout, I would say, really looked, had a real you know, almost a, what would you call it, uh, the motif was almost you know, very Inuit to First Nation sort of elements in it, just and that earlier influence. And as time went, it was just a natural progression and how I viewed space, like in these images back here. Uh, I really loved the uncluttered of having this white background, and this color in the foreground. And, uh, and that really was, uh, I think, informed by the the earlier Asian influences. And as time progressed, uh, with the color medium I use, in part it's related to, when I think about the Chinese brushwork, it was ink, you know, and uh, what I thought as a younger person, you know, assumed it might be watercolor, but it was all ink with the different colors, you know, the brightness of some of their work. Or even the, you know, the very serene, peaceful, with sort of very few colors, like black, and a little bit of red. Uh, I loved all of that. And so the watercolor, which most of my work is, has watercolor. I would say 90% of my work is uh, watercolor based. 
the early work had watercolor and ink. Uh, very similar to the Japanese woodblock printmakers, uh, I would, you know, use black outlines on everything. That's how I started. Simple black with color, a little bit of color, which is very few, like the Chinese painting. It would be black and white and red. Then at one point, uh, I started to use more color because I was interested in other birds, because birds were really the, what started it all for me. And uh, just like in a lot of the Asian paintings, uh, they have a lot of birds in their work. And birds make a special connection for me, because you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the, the, the use of color and watercolor, but the reason for the birds goes back when I was about 10 years old, I uh, had cousins living on a farm, and one of their, uh, I have to say, barbaric pastimes was to shoot birds. <laughs> you know, they kept trying, you know, come on, Danny, take, no, 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 no. I resisted that for a long time. Then one day, I said, I'll go ahead, and I thought, well. And I thought, surely I wouldn't hit anything. So they gave me the rifle, and, you know, I aimed and shot, and I was horrified that I actually hit the sparrow. And then, for a 10-year-old to come up to this creature, I've always liked birds. You know, they, you know, I've had sort of a relationship and dreams about flying at that age. And just to hold this still, warm, beautiful creature, you know, one of the plainest birds out there, but just feeling its body still warm from that. And I was just horrified and stunned at what I had done. And uh, that stayed with me for a while. And as, you know, as, at that age, it sort of goes into the background, and uh, as I got older, it started to, you know, become more aware of who I was, what I wanted, and, you know, what I'm made of, you know, that, that feeling of that, from that event with the bird would keep coming up. And eventually, I started doing black and white ink drawings, and uh, eventually birds came into it, and it kind of became my mission, in a way, it's, it's almost my tribute back or penance in some way for, you know, for what I had done that I would sort of champion the, the lives of birds and just bring them into the into focus in people's minds as, uh, as what I've always thought of birds as. They're the messengers between sort of heaven and earth. And uh, in many cultures, and what I found out later in Shinto, they have that belief too, that birds are messengers. And uh, so from that event, birds were just always part of my artwork. In the beginning, just birds, in black and white, and the color started to come in, and which I refer back to the Chinese and Japanese uh, painters and how they would use color and how they would use space. And little by little, you know, it's, uh, people talk about being self-taught. Now, I've never gone to art college. I don't have, you know, master's degrees, whatnot. So I, I like to say I'm self, in a, in a way, self-motivated, but everything I see, everything anybody sees, any artist, that they love this art, that art, in little ways, it's sort of little pieces of their puzzle that build, you know, my particular uh, subject matter, sort of where I come from, you know, all the good ideas come in and they mix and meld and we come up with something new, a new way to do this. Now, with the color coming into the work, uh, that evolved too. It's from the birds and unusual situation settings, other symbolic uh, patterns and symbols started to evolve to some that I'd create myself and put into the work. Uh, that started to grow. And over time, you know, I started to have more shows of the work. And uh, people talk about, why watercolor? Okay, the other reason for watercolor is, uh, I have some allergies and some asthma. And oil paint, that was out right away. And that desire to paint, I had to put color down somewhere. And I just sort of came across these uh, watercolor pencil crayons. You sort of sketch on and melt it down. And that wasn't good enough for me. So I thought, okay, so I break, cut the pencil apart, break up the, the pieces of pigment and melt them in water and then paint from there. Because then I didn't have a lot of money. I thought, okay, I'm not going to go buy something yet that I don't know. So it was, a lot of my first work were done that way. And uh, so, you know, the practical side, I like that, but I, I like the other side of watercolor, too. Uh, 